Penny, thanks for staying with us on KTN Saturday Night Live. Let's take you to our weekly Saturday series, Survivor. And tonight, we feature a familiar face who survived a grenade attack. The grenade attack made Kamkunji MP Honorable Yusuf Hassan realize that there is more to life than work. For years, he had taken his family for granted, working tirelessly to give them a better life. He also says that he was blind to the disabled people in society until early December last year when he stared death in the face. Catherine Amanda is up next with this week's Survivor. On December 6, 2012, like any other day, Yusuf Hassan went to the al Daya Community Center for Salatul Isha, also known as Evening Prayers. It was about uh, 8.30. Uh, in the evening when I came out of the al Hidayah community center uh, and I stepped out uh, and I was greeting uh, people who had just come out of the uh, mosque uh, for prayers. Uh, some few minutes, uh, two or three minutes after the uh, greetings, I had a crack and a loud bang and uh, two or three of the people who uh, were greeting me were lifted off the ground and I had them screaming. Yusuf says the events unfolded in slow motion and it took him a while to notice that he too had become a victim of a terror attack. Uh, I fell on my back. Uh, I could see uh, my foot dangling uh, from my right limb. I could also see blood and, uh, uh, on, uh, on my left leg. I could also feel some pain on my uh, left arm. At that moment, I didn't know what had happened. Yusuf's body went into survival mode. His brain triggered the release of adrenaline, which excites the body and, in his case, even numbed his pain. This way, he could concentrate on the task at hand, which was staying alive. Well, actually, I was concentrating on uh, getting help uh, to the injured, uh, particularly the two children who were lying next to me, one of them was still um, able to um, scream, uh, the other one was silent. It was uh, survival, trying to, uh, to save uh, uh, my life and the lives of all the other people who were affected. Uh, and um, I could not imagine uh, that uh, on a such a nice uh, Friday, I had been to several parts of the constituency. It was a beautiful day that it could end so horribly. Uh, I didn't know the extent of the, the damage uh, uh, that the bomb had caused uh, because it's a very cruel weapon. Uh, the first thing it does is that it tears apart your muscles, it destroys the tendons, and then it cracks the bones. So it has that uh, multiple effect on the body. And it's also a chemical thing. And so uh, parts of my skin peeled off. Um, I had a lot of pain. But when you go into an hospital and you get the kind of medical attention that I was getting, uh, medication, modern medication now somehow alleviates uh, the intense pain that most, uh, and trauma that uh, most people suffer. The other thing also was the trauma. I was feeling waves of, um, of pain uh, and uh, nightmares about uh, 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 being in an attack, uh, falling off a place. So it took quite a bit of time. It took uh, maybe two to three weeks uh, for me to be able to um, uh, overcome uh, the trauma. The grenade attack happened at such a crucial time for Yusuf Hassan, who at the time was gearing up for the general election. Instead of campaigning on the streets of Kamkunji, Yusuf was stuck in a hospital bed, yet he won by a landslide. Four weeks ago, Yusuf was discharged. He and his family had to do a whole lot of adjusting, especially emotionally. They were, uh, at the beginning, very shocked um, uh, and um, angered by what has happened. Uh, but it has actually brought my family uh, together because like my son was out of the country, he's come back. Uh, he's been spending a lot of time with me. Uh, my daughter who's uh, was standing outside as well has been in and out. She's come to see me. Um, my kids are all around me all the time. And one of the great things of going back home, in fact, is the fact that the support and the presence of the family is part of the healing process. It accelerates your, your healing. 
it builds your uh, psychology in terms of uh, thinking positively. And so it is really wonderful to have them all and uh, they have been extremely supportive. I, I'm beginning to feel that I should be spending more time with them. While Yusuf, his wife and five children have adjusted well and even had to redecorate their home, coming back to Parliament, however, is a constant reminder that he, even if it's for a short while, is disabled. Parliament has no room for disabled people. Uh, in fact, first of all, it clearly uh, tells you how fragile uh, we human beings are. Uh, and um, how we take uh, for granted a lot of things in our lives. Uh, we don't see the, uh, the poor and underprivileged uh, because when you're doing well, uh, you, you focus uh, on the things that are of concern to you. You become self-centered. Uh, I'm now much more outward looking. I see more things than that I hadn't seen before. For example, uh, I'm really shocked uh, by how disadvantaged our disabled people are. Access to public buildings, access to facilities, uh, they, they are invisible in our eyes. Uh, for example, people who are on crutches are frightened uh, of um, using public uh, uh, pavements and uh, public facilities because of the crowds. Are they going to be bumped off? A little touch could damage them. And secondly, how marginalized they are, because they, it's, uh, even as a member of parliament, I, I can't uh, access it. Uh, many parts of uh, the national parliament. There's no access for, there's no wheelchair access. There's no access for this. There are no toilets. Um, so there are a lot of little things that you have to think when you're going out of your house in the morning. Uh, you have to plan your day uh, much more rigorously than if you're an able person. Yusuf is not about to give up. He says he has been given a new lease of life and he intends to make every moment count. The saying goes, with every cloud there is always a silver lining. Before 2012 December, Honorable Yusuf Hassan didn't realize that there was a certain lack within our society when it came to protecting the rights of people living with disabilities. Even though Yusuf Hassan will end up walking by the end of the year, people living with disabilities can be assured that they have him in their corner. Catherine and Wendell for the Survivor Series.